Awesome. So, uh, welcome to managing uh, hybrid infrastructure with PowerShell. Uh, just, a, just a quick show of hands. Who has all of their servers in one data center? Or one cloud? Or one spot? That's pretty much what I assumed. Uh, <clears throat> so, go through some kind of tips and tricks today. Uh, some of the kind of cool stuff that Microsoft's been working on to get you guys being able to manage all of that at, in one spot. So, uh, so just quick about myself. You know, pretty common path. I'm sure a lot of folks in here, is, you know, went from a help desk to a sysadmin. You know, I was the guy. If I ever had to do something more than three times, I wrote a script to do it, starting with VBS and uh, over into PowerShell, uh, and then I became a system center consultant and an orchestrator SME. And at the time, I realized that pretty much everything I was doing in Orchestrator was just writing the PowerShell. <laughs> like, it, it's, you, you gave up on the activities after a while and you just wrote PowerShell, All right? So uh, I now work as a managed automation architect for Acquisitive, uh, used to be Catapult Systems. We merged uh, last year. Uh, but basically building you know, enterprise-ready uh, automations for customers. And, and managing them, right? Because a big part of this and a big part of you know, what I try to evangelicalize and a big part of the book that I just wrote as well is building automations that last, right? So you know, my managed automation came from, I was building automations for customers. Six months later, they called me up, it broke. Like, well, what'd you change? You know, it was always the first question, but you know, being able to create things that you can, you know, reuse and you know, maintain is, is a big part of automation, right? You can write, sit down and write a script, it's, it's, you know, it's great, but you know, can we run that script again two or three months later and expect the same output? Uh, I am also a U5 through U8 certified soccer coach, so that's, that's my newest ambition. Uh, but just a, a quick history, so you, know, you all know this, Right, PowerShell remoting went from, you know, five one with WS Man to Open SSH. You know, there's hypervisor based. You know, the, the big thing about all three of those is you have to be on that LAN, right? And even you know, a lot of customers, or companies I work with, you know, even their WAN is not completely connected. You know, you get different continents, different things. It's it's not always great. You know, with with the advent of Azure, AWS, you know, Google Cloud, those things. Right, it really kind of opened things up to, now you can kind of connect to it from anywhere. Right? So with, with an Azure VM, you can run a command on it just you know, through HTTPS. Right? So what Microsoft has done is created Azure Arc. How many people are familiar with Azure Arc? Okay, so Azure Arc is a, it's an agent-based ser service and you install the agent on any server, anywhere other than an Azure server, because it actually won't let you, but. <laughs> uh, so you, and what it does is it creates an object of that uh, server inside of Azure. So that could be on your on-premise data center, that, that can be in AWS, you know, VMware. They even have it now uh, for vSphere and uh, SCVMM to be able to put it down at the control plane level and surface all those servers up through there. So what does that provide? Well, number one, you get a single pane of glass. You know where every single one of your servers, you can look them all up at one time. Right? Also, you can enable a lot of the Azure services that are uh, inherent that, that you would get on Azure VM on those on-premise or other cloud VMs, such as updates and logging and things like that. So you can see holistically across all of your processes and things like that, <clears throat> what you have. Apply policy, security, change tracking, all sorts of different services. The best part about it, to put a, the, the cost of putting a server in Arc is nothing. Right, some of the services that you turn on, there's cost to them, 
uh, policies, change tracking, security, those ones do. Uh, updates is free. Logging is just based upon the ingestion. So if you're already using log analytics agents to ingest data, there's, it's no different. Um, but just to get a server serviced up, serviced up there and, and going, there's no cost to it. All right? And what that does, the great thing about that is it makes uh, that actual object inside of Azure, right? So that you can use tagging, you can use resource groups, you can you know, combine things together all you want. So hop into the demo here. All right, so can you guys see that all right in the back? Go a little bigger? All right, so traditional Azure VM I have running here. All right, I, I just want to you know, get some information about the operating system. All right, so we can use this set AZ VM run command. So there's also one that you'll see is called invoke AZ run command. The difference between the set and the invoke is the invoke is real time. Set is it's actually gonna create that object and save it on that server. And another thing that I'm gonna do here is uh, set as job to true, right? So what that's gonna allow me to do, is that one really large? You go away, okay. So what that allows me to do is actually create a PowerShell job in the background, right? So now I can run this on multiple servers and not have to wait for that script to finish on each and every server. All right? But the downside to jobs is they're unique to this session I have right here. Right? If I close this session, those jobs are gone. I have no idea what the status of them is anymore. But uh, what I can do is since we did the set az run command is I can go back and I can get the az run command. Right? And this is just a little while loop that runs through to you know, check for this completion status. Hopefully we got success and not failed. All right, and then we get our, our data back. All right, so we see here all the information that it ran. Now we can emulate this on an ARC server. Fortunately, not as cleanly at this time, but it is getting better. All right, but there is a custom script extension that you can run on an, on an ARC server to be able to essentially run a command on a server. Right? The command that you run, if it's a Windows server, is gonna be a command prompt based, or it's gonna be a shell if it's a Linux server. Either way, it doesn't matter, I'm running PowerShell. I got that installed on either service. I'm gonna run the same exact command on here. All right, it's, it's pretty, again, pretty straightforward. We run through, and all of a sudden we're getting some errors back, right? That's because when we ran, right, we, we just did an HTTP request. We got a 202, said, okay, we submitted that. Good. Now it's all automatically, it's going down. We're doing the same exact thing, doing our little while loop, waiting for our success and our fail. Well, you know, I sent that HTTP request and then half a second later, milliseconds later, I'm trying to tell it, you know, where are you going with that? So obviously it didn't like that too much. But now you see here, it actually is creating that instance on that virtual, or you know, it could be a physical box or a virtual machine or whatever, wherever you have it running. I actually have it running on this Surface tablet as well. Uh, so we succeeded, and then again, same thing, we're getting our output here. Now, a couple things to note with this output here, is that's just a big old nasty string. All right, and at the same time, if you do have any errors, they end up back in this same exact string. So you, you know, gotta do a little bit of parsing and you know, breaking things apart to be able to get that data out of there. And it's the same exact thing on the Windows, or on, I'm sorry, on the uh, Azure VM, right? That's, that's just a string. I just outputted a string and that's, that's what I got. You know, who, can, who can actually tell me what that's saying? Uh, <clears throat> but again, we can work around that, All right? So what we need to do is, you know, so, so what, basically what we need to overcome to get you know, the, one, the one script to rule them all, right? Uh, Windows VM 
And that is a typo. I didn't mean to put that. <laughs> uh, but the Windows VM, you know, it, is, it runs Windows PowerShell, right? Simple enough, we can get around that by just invoking PWSH, right? Arc is command prompt. Again, same thing, PWSH. Linux VMs, Arc, they both run shell, PWSH. <laughs> That's all you gotta do is put PWSH at the beginning of your commands and you're running PowerShell 7 across any server uh, that you want. Uh, the output is a simple string. Also, the output is limited to 4,096 characters. So obviously the you know, solution for this, make it a, you know, a data format, JSON, XML, what have you, right? But you're still limited to 4,096 characters in both Azure VMs and Arc servers. Uh, <clears throat> Arc only retains the last output. So every time you rerun that custom script extension, it's overriding the previous one that ran. And then obviously Arc uh, combines the outputs and the errors. So let's take a look at how we can get around some of those uh, issues and with the set az run command, it's real simple. You can do output blob URI and an error blob URI. That's going to grab your input or your output and your uh, error streams and it's going to write them directly to a blob. All right. So what do you need to get this started? A blob storage. And Azure, Azure storage, um, you can create a SAS token which will allow it to write directly into that blob without having to pass keys and things like that to it. All right, these are, you know, ex they expire. You know, the recommended is about a day. Uh, and then you rewrite and all sorts of other different permissions, things like that. It's all here in this one command, really. Uh, no, it has to be a, a SAS. Well, I'll take that back. You can. Uh, now, but you can use managed identities to to get that and write back. Um, but we'll kind of we'll, we'll we'll dig into that a little bit with the uh, on the arc side. All right, so <clears throat> I'll go ahead and run that part. And so what I do here is typically what I'll do is I'll create a run command name. So I'm I'm just building out my URI. Right, this is coming from my storage context, right, so I know what my storage account, you know, HTTP, you know, blob storage, what have you. And we just break apart the VM ID, we do subscription, resource group, VM name, output text, right? We'll do the same exact thing uh, with a, uh, with the error text, right? So that's, that's my URL out to, where I'm going to write my, my data to. All right, so I just run that. Again, I can run my set command, and I'm waiting for my output, and I'm getting my data. F8 instead of F7 helps. So again, here, so we're, we're saying set that command and go get it, right? And again, last time we saw that as we were running, we start getting error messages, right? So this time I'm just going to build a quick little try catch in there just to ensure that you know, we're getting the appropriate error message, right? Because you never want to do the just you know, error action silent because you don't know if it's not coming back for a different reason, right? You might not be connected, things like that, all that type of information. And then again, so now we don't need to go back and get that uh, command instance view string, right? What we did is we wrote directly to uh, the blob and then we can pull that data directly back from the blob using an invoke rest method. All right, so now our data that came back is a nice clean PowerShell object that we can actually do something with. All right, so again, how do we accomplish this? Just, you know, get CM instance, and all I did is add a convert to JSON at the end. Took my script, that's the output I wanted, convert to JSON, invoke rest method, automatically converts it back for me because it's a properly formatted JSON, and I have a PowerShell object. All right, so unfortunately, 
the arc, as you know, doesn't even have a commandlet yet. There is a set arc extension commandlet. It's in, still in 0.4.1. Your results may vary. That's why I use the REST API, as, as you guys saw. It's simple, it's quick, it's easy, and it works. On the same token, it doesn't have the ability to just write those streams back to, to a blob. Uh, but what we can do is we can wrap our commands, our script that we want to run, and capture our output, capture our errors, and then write those back to a blob, right? The downside to that being is, you know, the traditional way to write to a blob is to, you know, get a token, you know, have the Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell on that machine, save that to a file, upload it, right? So I wrote a function here, just write script to blob, that all it will do is write a script up to it. So it'll take any string and just write it straight into a, a blob. It's just using the you know, regular REST methods that are available with, a, with an SAS token. All right, now if we come out here, we see that we wrote our data straight into a blob. All right, so I can do this with both the script that I'm going to write and the return data that, I, that I'm going to get from it. All right? So, and actually, if we look here too, you can see the data that came back from us running that against the Azure VM. There's our error in our output. So, get arc script wrapper is another function that we've I've included in here. And what this will do is you'll get a, a blob URI and a error blob URI, and it's going to write this all into a wrapped script for us. And I really. I really should have re. There we go. So it wrote. It just wrote this for us. This script is going to be the same every single time, with the exception of these three URIs. Right, these three URIs are telling it, here's your script content to go get. Here's your error and blob outputs to get. And it just automatically injects that right to script to blog function in there. And then our command, we just use a simple invoke command. It'll run it. You can even pass parameters to that and everything. And then, you know, with a, with a try catch, we can catch any errors, any terminating errors. And then we write our data back to the blob. So it's all being done directly from the machine you know, to be able to, you know, support essentially what's available there. So we take a look here. Again, we're going to go ahead and run this against our Arc server. All right, but again, we're going to do a little different. So same thing, breaking apart that uh, that URI into a you know a nice string. We're building our script wrapper, writing that up in there, and then this time when we're doing the command pwsh, we're going to use an encoded command, right? Because our command is starting to get a little bit longer, right? Th this command stays the same length every time. Thankfully, you know, with the exception of however long your, uh, your strings happen to be, but there is an upper limit that you can hit to passing a uh, script into this. I haven't narrowed down the exact number on what it is yet, but there is an upper limit. 
but this doesn't hit it. But by using the encoded command, you're, you're encoding that PowerShell script into a base64 string. So you're not, you don't have to worry about escape characters or you know, hear strings or you know, mismatched brackets, any of those type of stuff, right? <laughs> it, so, so PowerShell and Defender, I know Defender does this, it decodes it before it runs it, and, and Defender will flag uh, any like malicious code that is encoded. It, it knows, I've, I've tested it, it, it tries it, it works. Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> The, yeah, but it, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's base sixty four, so it's not it's not encrypted, right? It's encoded. You can decode it right straight back down, which is what the machine does. And actually, if they look at it, it'll pretty much be the same characters every time. You'll you'll they'll see the logs coming through, and uh, and, and getting that data back. Um, one of the other things to keep in mind here is, as I mentioned, it it overrides every single time that it, that it writes a new one, right? So if I send that message to it, I say, hey, here's, here's my new script to run, give me the status of that script. It hasn't processed that yet. So I build a second function. Uh, there's, so there's two loops in this one, right? One loop to make sure that it's gone back from a updating, creating, waiting status from you know, success or failed if it had run previously. All right, and then coming back and getting our status. And again, we're getting our return data directly from our, our URL. So there's our data. We got our 202 that says we put it. We waited for the update, waited for the start. We are, we are good to go. All right, so we can try this again. So, you know, created a slightly larger script uh, that we're going to get that same exact data from the Linux machine, or we're going to get it from a Windows machine. Like we said, it doesn't matter. You know, we're running that same command across all different servers. And the, the great thing about this is I don't need to even need to remember which servers I ran this command across to get the data back from it, right? Just using um, Azure blob storage, right? I can come in here, I can see, you know, demo two, here's all the machines, all the output data that came from it. Right? I can group that down and get to the individual machines that I ran. Right, and then through a nice little loop here, I can just I can get my data, convert it from JSON. And again, you don't even have to download directly from, you don't have to download this to your local machine. You can stream it straight in. But you know, for each server that I have in here, you know, go ahead and parse through and give me my data. And there we go. We see what the two machines I ran this against. I wrote this one, it was uh, slightly smaller. All right, so there's our data. I didn't need, that. like I said, I didn't need to remember which machines it was, you know, what that command was, whether or not I'd overwritten that previously on that ARC server, what have you. That data stayed there inside of that um, shell command. And uh, another good point towards that you know, when we talk about security, the way that this function actually works is if we look at when it runs for an ARC server, I'm writing that script specifically into there. So you can come back and see the exact script that was written every single time. So, put it all together in one fancy command, 
<laughs> right? We, we uh, have an invoke arc command function that we wrote, right? Pass the resource group name, name, run command, all these type of things, right? Here's build out your URI, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry about that. Got you covered. If I can remember my hotkeys. All right? Put it all together into one. So wrote a function in here, and we'll, we can take a look at it. Invoke az remote command. It'll all go through. It'll say, this is an Azure VM. I'm going to run this command. This is a uh, Arc server. I'm going to run it this way. Come back, gather the data. Right? We get all of our executions. It runs through, finds everything as it goes. All I need to do is just pass it a list of servers. So there it's going. I basically told it, I gave it two resource groups in my Azure instance. One of it contained um, Azure VMs, the other contained Arc VMs. And it's running through. It's going to execute that command on each one of them, come back, get the data and everything like that that, that it's doing. It's automatically building that uh, big old long command for you with the, with the URI. So we can see, look at that, the, the machine actually running on this Wi-Fi came back first. So <laughs> we'll give them, give them some credit there. And then our, so our Linux boxes are coming back, things like that. Super simple to do. All, we, all I had to do to get this to work is have the Arc agent installed, run PowerShell 7, and have an Azure storage account. Like I said, the, you know, we've actually already run across every single machine in there. So see, we got all that data back from every single machine. This came about, right, the, the first iteration of this, uh, and some of you may have seen that, at, uh, it was the Research Triangle user group talk I gave uh, a while back uh, during Log4j had a customer who had 14,000 servers that they needed to scan for Log4j. And if you guys remember, it's not just, hey, is Log4j installed? It's checking registries. It's checking DLLs. It's, I mean, it was an intense script to be able to find that. We were able to use this method to go out, and it was actually quicker for them to just install Arc agents than it was for them to go run this script on every single server, right? And Microsoft's made that even easier for you nowadays, too, which we can take a look here. Um, but what I'll sh show you, just real quick, is how simple it is to you know, run these different scripts. You know, the invoke VM command. And these are all be available on, on GitHub as well. Right, we're doing PWSH. Right, we're in Linux, I mean, just run it right there, but if we're doing Windows, since it is native, you know, Windows PowerShell, we just throw our dot in front of it. And then it so it runs in the same exact instance that's in there. Um, I even have some scripts in here to help you uh, get that all set up and installed. So I'm sure you're all familiar with this <laughs> command here. Uh, same thing there's just a shell command that you can run. You can run that directly uh, you know, through the command extension ex itself as well, right? And uh, just pass it through without the PWSH before you run this the first time um, to get it all out there and installed and, and up and running in your environment. But this, this uh, allows you to just get that, get that data, get it out there, get, you know, know what everything is doing, know where everything is reporting, um, know where everything is coming from. All right, so again, I said, you know, we get this central pane of glass. I see all my servers. I know these are running, when they're connected, what they're doing. You know, I'm able to see my CPU usage across all of them. But most importantly, I can connect to every single one of them and, and run commands on them. So, any questions? I don't think I've specifically tried. I don't see why it wouldn't. 
Yeah, I'd be I'd be curious to uh, test that out as well. So, yeah. You 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 can just pass that arc script as a dash command as well. If you know, because again, the, the script's the same, going to be the same every time. So you know, you could build in your escape characters and all the other things. I just didn't bother to do because I encoded it. it, it Works pretty well. So it's 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 getting there. So they're they're adding a lot uh, every day. I come in here and I click and, and see new things like this Windows Admin Center. Right there's ability to you know, do control plane things directly from within Arc now as well. So before it used to just be able to surface things. Uh, now you can actually do, you know, send control commands. Um, again, the, the onboarding process, right, at a single server, it will literally just generate the script for you. You can tell it, you know, which resource group you want it to go to, whether you're doing Windows or Linux, if you're behind a proxy. Um, and it will literally just give you a PowerShell script that you can download and you can run on your servers. All right? And also, you can also do, if you're doing multiple servers, it'll do the same thing. Uh, just with, it'll generate a service principle that will be used to authenticate. Because if you do the single server, what it's, it's going to pop up on you and ask you to authenticate to Azure that first time. And then the machine itself is authenticated after that. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, doing multiple servers, it will it'll generate a key that will get passed into it that will onboard them all, you know, without the without the prompt. Uh, if you're using update management, and this works, I've used it. Uh, you click here, you click add servers. If those servers are already registered uh, in uh, Azure Update Management, it'll make them Arc servers in like two minutes. They'll all just show up right in there. It works really great because one of the one of the uh, the great thing is, so if you guys aren't familiar with you know, Azure Update Management, right, Azure Update Manager can patch your servers anywhere. Right? It, it just it runs that, you run it on-prem, you can run it off there. The problem is it was based upon log analytics, which is a timed database. So your agent stopped reporting, you had no idea that that machine ever even existed. And this, these are static objects inside of Azure. If this machine gets turned off, this flips to disconnected. I know this machine no longer exists, right? So uh, it helps you know keep track and inventory of things as well. So you know whether it's when the machine got turned off or the agent stopped working, I'm gonna I'm gonna know, right? It's not just gonna fall off my list. So we had about. Uh, Sometimes I talk kind of quick, so <laughs> feel free to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, yes. So you talking about for for the the, the basic four for the for the SAS token for the so for the token that you get on the. At the end here, uh, there there is the ability in the API to use a so you can create uh, managed identities. Uh, who all in here is familiar with managed identities in Azure? All right. about, about half. All right. So for those, just real quick, for those who aren't, what managed identity is is it creates an Azure AD object for that system inside of Azure AD, right? Essentially, 
So what that allows that machine to do is authenticate or, or that resource. It, it works for you know, VMs, it works, you can use an automation accounts, function apps, a lot of stuff in there. Right? So this way you're not having a service principal with certificates and secrets, things that get leaked. It is only that Azure resource that can do that authentication. So you, you can use a managed identity to pass through to that and that will invoke that session as that managed identity so that you can then pull that data down or push it up or what have you, you know, through that. Um, in order to use that though, you do have to have the Azure, either Azure CLI or Azure commandlets installed on that machine. And Azure VM has that by default I'm sure that you guys don't have that <laughs> DAZ modules installed on every single one of your on-premise machines. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a give or take. You know, it's like you can do it either way. Uh, just, you know, which preferences do we want to have and how do we want to keep that all up to date? And again, if you don't care about your output from your script, you just want to execute that script. Say you want to just install the AZ modules. You can just run that get command and just, you know, install module dash AZ dash force and assume it worked. <laughs> you, know, you get your, it will, it will give anything, anything that's a non-zero, it will come back and tell you on, but um, yeah, you can push it through that way as well. So this, it's all laid out in the API. Like I, like I mentioned, there, there is a command list that they're working on for it. They're not the most robust yet. The, the, uh, the one that I'm using down here, the, get AZ connected machine extension, it works great. Um, documentation is kind of light when it comes down here to the settings. All right, so there's commands to execute, there's, that's where you can pass the managed identity, that's where you get those things. You know, maybe that's something we could bring up at the docathon on, on Thursday, <laughs> is hey, give me some more documentation on this, on this set and, uh, and get. Uh, and, and for those of you who aren't familiar with this command, this thing is my favorite thing in the world. Invoke AZ REST method. All right, it, you're not having to worry about headers or you know, any of that. It's taking your local Azure uh, context and using that to authenticate when you're running that REST command against Azure. So that you, like I get said, you don't, you don't have to worry. You connect to Azure using the Connect AZ account and everything that you send through that is gonna use whatever it is you use to connect through with. But uh, again, so this is uh, all, I put this into a AZ remote command uh, function out here. Uh, the, just a couple, I mean, th these are basically just some wrapper functions to uh, get through here and, you know, get, get my status so I don't have to remember all of this. All right, I just give it my command, my research group, and my name. It's gonna come back and give me my status. A script wrapper, again, this was pretty straightforward, right? Just, this is just a big here string. Input, you know, inputting our uh, different functions and uh, URIs into it, and, and it's gonna execute and it's gonna run. It's gonna get, get that data right back for us. You know, get the remote command output. It doesn't even care about the machines that are, it's running against, right? This is gonna go up and it's gonna search your blob storage. So it'll come back, it'll get all the, all the machines that you ran against that, give you your error and your output text and everything, get it right back straight from there. So, and as, you know, as things progress, as things you know, get better, right, we can go in here, we can, because the original versions of these <laughs> involved writing a uh, ARM template to inject that into that. Now we have an API. You know what comes after the API. It's gonna end up in Azure CLI, it's gonna end up in Azure PowerShell, All right? So it's, it's coming through this, this path as well. Anything else? Good? All right, well, appreciate you guys giving me some time. The, uh, so the <clears throat> I do have my book that just came out, so Practical Automation PowerShell for uh, 
our folks who asked a bunch of questions, come up back I'll, I'll get you a copy. Uh, if you want to order one, get code here for 35% uh, off in all formats, so ebook, uh, hard copy, what have you. And then uh, all of this code will be up on the uh, on my GitHub. And if you're ever looking for me, pretty much M. Doust anywhere. That's one of the benefits of my last name. There's only one one other Matt Doust in the United States that I'm aware of, and he's a professional surfer, so I get <laughs> I get all the tech stuff first. Um, now also, if, if you guys aren't aware, I do have a PowerShell Weekly, just a, a weekly uh, newsletter I put out. It's just it's just on my blog. It's not a nothing to subscribe to, no emails to give. It's not sponsored. It's just stuff that I found from that week that I you know think the community would enjoy. If you guys um, you know have anything that you think you know should be on there, please let me know. Twitter. Yeah, thank you. So Twitter is usually the best place to get a hold of me. But uh, like I said, uh, Mastodon, GitHub. All of those, um, it's all, it's all M DAOs, but cool. Thank you guys. I think we're, we're about five minutes back. <laughs>